update here it's it's the next day it's day two of this project and day one was really just fact finding and investigation and uh, now day two we're gonna try and start to make some wiring connections um, so I'll show you a few things uh, a guy I know who works on boat electrical systems and he said I could jump it off of the uh, the circuit that feeds the VHF uh, so it's a 10 amp circuit and I'm going to jump it off these wires Haven't figured out exactly where yet. I'm going to take this panel cover off again and see if I can get a little more slack and then I'm going to use uh, I was going to use some T connectors, but I Decided to go with terminal blocks instead. So I'm going to bring uh, Essentially one wire into a terminal block. So I'll bring one red in and then two will jump off of it, uh, one to the one to the AIS unit and the other to the VHF. I have these terminal block jumpers, so I'll put one of those jumpers on this other side of the terminal block, um, so that the the one wire in, two wires out. So I thought it was important to share with you this schematic uh, wiring schematic that I roughed out when I was trying to plan this uh, install. Uh, maybe explain a little bit better uh, why I'm going with the terminal blocks. So the two lines uh, at the top of the page running left to right represent the uh, positive and negative wires, the red and the black for the VHF. Uh, black would be the negative. So the wire is going to be cut and I'm going to install the terminal block right there where it says, uh, where it's a, like a T. So one black wire comes in and two black wires go off. One black wire goes back to the VHF and the other black wire goes to the AIS. For the positive line, where that T is, that T intersection, one red wire in, then two red wires out. One red wire goes back to the VHF. The other one is going to go to the fuse holder. Uh, it's going to be the fuse holder wire. So then once I bring the fuse holder wire off, I need to land that on a terminal block again and then off that terminal block is another red wire to the AIS. So connection points are represented by the rectangular blocks. Um, I hope that gives you a little bit better insight into um, how I was planning on wiring this. Connections of the different wires to the devices. I connected the, uh, disconnected the VHF antenna from the radio, connected it to the, uh, from the VHF unit, connected it to the AIS. Then I connected the, uh, the jump wire back to the VHF. I went ahead and connected the power and the CTALK connector to try and figure out where in the space I'm gonna mount it. And I was looking here, but I don't think that I can get the cables off and have enough room to wire everything. I don't know where the terminal blocks will go. It just doesn't fit over here on the side. This is also a little close to this. There's a speaker there. I don't really know if I want it by a speaker. Magnets. Anyway, um, I'm thinking up here. Um, it's accessible. I can still get down and see the lights, which they say I need to be able to do. I can access the, there's a USB port between these two for uh, diagnostics and reprogramming. I can access that. So I think this is what we're gonna go with. Um, leaves me space to wire it. I can run it down. I can do all the wiring and terminal blocks right above this space here. So keep your fingers crossed, see how it goes. Okay, so slight change of plans. This is where I decided to mount it. Um, the overhead mount was just is too difficult. Uh, so I flipped it on its side and put it right there. So now we'll start to make some connections. Okay, so I'm still wiring everything, but I thought just out of an abundance of caution, I would close the panel to make sure that everything fit. And it does. So good news.
it's mounted. I'm starting to pull some of the wires um, so that I can figure out where I'm going to install the terminal blocks and the inline fuse holder. Stay tuned. Okay, so here's where we are on the install. I've got the unit mounted, connected the seat talk. I've routed it through the raceway up and into an empty seat talk port. I've connected the VHF antenna. It's up on the mast here. I have connected the out to the radio unit in cable, which route through the raceway and comes back up over here, put a couple zip ties on. And now I'm getting ready to do the power. And what I decided is I'm gonna mount the terminal block somewhere, somewhere in here. I haven't quite figured it out yet, but I did decide that I'm gonna jump it off this wire. There's a lot of extra wire in here. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a lot on this side, much more than, than on this side of the, of the unit. So I'm gonna work over here. More wire, more space, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, install, the only thing I haven't done is the GPS antenna. Um, got a buddy that's gonna bring me a, a tape and a string so I can chase the wire through the, the hull tomorrow. Um, but I am gonna fire it up. I got everything done, so AIS is all wired. Um, someone told me the ground's optional, so I'm going to follow up on that, but it sounds like you have to ground it to the hull strap. Can't ground it to the negative terminal, specifically says so in the instructions. But I got the power wiring done. Here are my terminals. So here's what I did. Um, circuit power in, and then that jumps. There's a jumper there, and then one goes to the AIS and one goes to the VHF. Actually, this one goes to the fuse inline fuse and then back from the inline fuse to the power cable um, and then there's the other one so moment of truth we've put everything back together we put all the covers on we're going to turn on the dc power and see what happens stay tuned